So some of you may not know this about me, but I was born with really bad asthma. Uh, when I was young, I had a really difficult time controlling my symptoms. And I even remember when I was in Head Start, the school nurse uh, the, at the school, she, she would have to call 911 and an ambulance would show up to pick me up multiple times. Uh, I had so many asthma attacks when I was little. Eventually, everywhere I went, I had to carry this uh, nebulizer, which in the 90s was this big gray box that I had to plug into the wall. And then uh, out of the actual box itself would be uh, like an oxygen hose that would go into this little cup. And I would put medicine in there and then I would attach a mask to it and I would put it on. And it would last about 15, 20 minutes. And afterwards, I, feel like, I would feel like my lungs expanded again and uh, was that they were actually working again. So growing up, my asthma was, was really bad and it limited me in so many ways. And so one day I was watching TV with my parents and uh, a commercial came on TV and it really caught my attention. It was the pastor of a new church downtown and he claimed that he had found this uh, uh, miracle oil, uh, miracle potion, I guess I would call it, uh, that if you drank it, uh, it could heal any sickness. All you had to do was show up to worship, take a sip of this miracle oil, and uh, allow people to lay hands on you or over you and pray for you, and any sickness, uh, he promised, would be taken away. Now, as a little kid, you know, I was 10 or 12 years old, somewhere around that age range, I begged my parents, I begged my dad and my mom, like, please take me to this church, right? Like, all I have to do is drink this oil and my asthma is going to go away. I mean, that sounds fantastic, right? Surprisingly, it was not very difficult to convince my parents uh, to take me. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think about it today. If, if I had a kid who came up to me and said, hey, dad, I want to go to this random church to drink this random uh, drink, um, and it's going to heal any sickness that I have, I think I would be a little weary of it. But my parents were like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so, so that still caught me by surprise. So, so we went downtown. I think it was a Wednesday, if I remember correctly. Uh, we, go to, we went downtown, we parked, we uh, walked into the church, and I only remember uh, a couple things about that night. I remember there was a lot of singing and a lot of screaming. I don't know what people were saying, but I remember just loud singing and loud screaming. And I remember in between songs, the pastor would, would come up on the stage and, and he would start praying, and his prayers would start off softly, very intimate, and then it would end with him just like yelling and like, like moving his hand like this towards the congregation. And it, I remember it making me a little bit uncomfortable. I also remember um, that there was a long line of people down that middle aisle, uh, just a long line of people walking up to the front ready to drink this miracle oil. And I, I remember some of them were passing out after they would drink it. Uh, they would drink it and like something would happen and they would just fall on the ground. And that, I don't know, that scared me a little bit. <laughs> it should have probably scared me a little bit more than it actually did. Uh, but but um, yeah, I, I remember uh, the, the other thing I remember is getting to the front of the line and getting this little cup. It was about this big, getting this tiny cup, just drinking it. And, I, and I've got to tell you, it was, um, it was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> that, that's the best way I can put it. It was absolutely disgusting. And to this day, I'm convinced that it was just vegetable oil poured into this little communion cup and uh, that, that I, I literally drank straight oil. It was horrible. Straight vegetable oil. But, but let me tell you what happened after I had that drink. I went back to my seat. I sat down and I said this prayer. I said, God, thank you for taking away my asthma. You, you see, after years of praying for my asthma to go away, after years of treatment, after years of going to the hospital, after years of asthma attacks, that night, after drinking that small cup of what I'm convinced was vegetable oil, my prayer was, God, thank you for taking away my asthma. Now, here's a funny part, or at least it's funny to me now. The, the next day when I woke up, one of the first things I did was reach over and grab my rescue inhaler because I was having a hard time breathing. My asthma had definitely not gone away after taking that miracle oil. In fact, uh, I still struggle with my asthma today. Uh, I still have uh, a lot of symptoms of asthma and I still have to be very cautious uh, and careful with my asthma. But I've got to tell you, even though that miracle oil didn't work, I still find myself praying every week, at least once a week, but praying every week that my asthma will go away. 
after 32 years, I just turned 32 a couple, uh, oh, last week, after 32 years of praying for my asthma to go away, and even after drinking that miracle oil and it didn't work, I still find myself praying that my asthma will one day go away. And here's the thing, my guess, and maybe I'm wrong, but my guess is that maybe there's something in your life that you have been praying for for a long time. And at times you wonder what's the point of praying for this because it seems like either God isn't listening or maybe God just isn't answering or God doesn't want to answer, right? Well, let me tell you, I want to talk today about why we need to keep praying for these things. Because here's the deal, we don't pray to God because we expect God to do the things we ask God to do. We pray because we trust that God can do the things we ask God to do. I wanna say that again because this is really important and I think it has to be the heart of why we keep praying for things. We don't pray to God because we expect God to do the things we ask God to do. We pray to God because we trust that God can do the things we ask God to do. You see, the first one assumes that uh, we have the power to tell God what to do, which, let's be honest, that is not true. The latter, the second one, it assumes that God can do the things we ask, but we trust God's will uh, over uh, whether those things will happen or not, right? So we keep praying our prayers to God, not to convince God to do certain things, but rather because we trust that God actually can. And here's why that's important. As long as we trust that God can do the things we ask God to do, as long as we trust that God can do that, we can hold on to hope no matter what we are going through. And it's actually very biblical. I want you to listen to this text from Isaiah chapter 62. It says, You who remind the Lord to take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. Let me explain what's happening here. About halfway through the book of Isaiah, uh, there is this shift where the Israelites go from having uh, uh, their land and having total control over it uh, to where all of a sudden they're conquered by Babylon and the Babylonians and uh, they're, they're sent out into exile all across the known world. And so, so, like I said, that's about halfway through the book of Isaiah. And by the time we get to the last third of the book of Isaiah, uh, the Israelites are back in their land, uh, but things aren't exactly the way they're supposed to be. They're back, but things aren't as glorious as they thought they would be. Think about their situation this way. Have you ever had a, a family gathering or maybe took a vacation or you met with a friend that you haven't seen in a long time and you were really excited to see them, but once you got there, the experience wasn't as great as you thought it would be? Have you ever had that? A couple years ago, I met up with some of my fraternity brothers from college, and, and uh, when we were in college, we spent a lot of time together. Many of us played soccer together, many of us played music together, many of us hung out together all the time. And I remember uh, we sat down, we ordered food and we ordered drinks, and uh, we started talking, and the whole time it was just awkward. It was like we knew each other, but everybody had gone their own separate ways. Everybody had uh, started new practices and new traditions, and all of a sudden it was just awkward. It wasn't the same. It wasn't what we expected. I think that is what's happening to the Israelites by the time we get to this latter uh, third of Isaiah. They're, they're back in their land, but they're rebuilding their temple. They're, they're, they're building other sites, important sites, but things just don't feel right. They're not the same, or at least they're not as great as everyone thought they would be. So Isaiah, the author of this, uh, of this book, uh, he says this, he, he says, you who remind or, or, you know, I would say, or pray, you who pray to the Lord, take no rest and give no rest until God establishes Jerusalem and makes it known throughout uh, the earth. See, Isaiah is telling the Israelites, keep praying to God and do not rest until God restores Jerusalem back, uh, back to its former glory. In fact, he says this, he says, pray so much that even God doesn't get rest, uh, doesn't get a chance to rest. Pray until God establishes Jerusalem and the whole known world uh, knows about it. Now, that's bold right there. 
my guess is that whatever you're praying about, you're probably praying about it because uh, whatever it is, it, it just doesn't feel right. It, you feel like things should be different or, or, or just uh, things aren't the way you thought they would be, right? So Isaiah gives us this challenge, gives the Israelites this challenge, and I think gives us this challenge. Pray so much that you don't give God rest. Pray until God establishes God's promises in your life. The things that don't feel right, the things that you just know aren't the way they're supposed to be, pray until God makes those things right and pray so much that you don't even give God rest. Maybe you're praying for sickness to go away and for health to be restored. Maybe you're praying for debts to go away and financial stability to be restored. Maybe you find yourself praying for fear to go away and for courage to be restored. Maybe you are praying for anxiety to go away and for peace to be restored. Maybe you're praying for depression to go away and for joy to be restored. Whatever it is you are praying for, there is this acknowledgement that something doesn't feel right. So we pray about it over and over and over again. Isaiah says, pray about it so much that you don't give God any rest. And do you know why we do that? because we trust that God can do the things we are asking God to do. Now, friends, we, we have to take no rest in our prayers. We have to give God no rest in our prayers because we have to trust that God can actually do the things we're asking of him. And even if nothing changes, this is really important, even if nothing changes, uh, we have to keep praying because as long as we keep praying, that means we still have a, a trust that God is able to do those things. And as long as we trust that God is able to do those things, uh, we can hold on to hope in the face of whatever it is that we are going through. Let me tell you why that's so important. You may have heard me say this before, but in Revelation chapter 21, uh, verses 10 through 11, it says this, And in the Spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear, as crystal. At the end of the Bible, we are told that Jerusalem is established in its full glory, uh, even better than its full glory, I would say. And, and the way Isaiah encouraged the Israelites to pray for, uh, that, that's, that's what's established, right? And, and here's what I want you to take away from this. In the end, God's promises will always be accomplished. There will be a day when sickness will be no more. There will be a day when debts will no longer be a thing. There will be a day when fear and anxiety and depression and everything else we pray to go away will actually be no more. You see, Isaiah knows that the things that God has promised to do, God will do. And even if it feels like it takes a long time for us to see those promises come to fruition, friends, we have to keep praying. Because as long as we keep praying, we hold on to hope that God can and God will. So I'm gonna keep praying for my asthma to go away. I know it might sound silly. I know I might be told that my asthma is never gonna go away, but I'm gonna keep praying for my asthma to go away. Maybe it'll go away tomorrow. Maybe it'll go away in a year, maybe in 20 years. Maybe I'll die and my asthma will have never gone away. But here's the thing, I know and I trust that even if my asthma doesn't go away until the day I'm in heaven, there will come a day when my asthma will go away. But until then, I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep giving God no rest, trusting that God can and that someday God will. My prayer today is that whatever it is you are going through, friends, I pray that you will keep praying about it. Keep holding on to hope because there will be a day when all things will be restored and everything will be made right. So here's what we're going to do. Jason is going to lead us in one more song, in just a, a short part of the song. And, that, and, and the song says, we need to move. We need you to move, God. And here's what I want you to do. While Jason is leading us in music, in this song, I want you to spend some time in prayer. And I want you to say to God, God, I need you to move in these places in my life. 
there are these struggles that I have. There's these fears that I have. There's these doubts that I have. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, give you no rest as I pray for these things. And as, as you pray for these things, I want you to remember, these things might not change. That They can change tomorrow, but they might not. They might not change in a week. They might not change in a year. They might not ever change. But they might not ever change in this world. But there will be a day when heaven is established. There will be a day when uh, all these things that hold us back from enjoying life, all these things that bring fear and anxiety and depression and worry into our lives, all those things will one day be no more. So friends, no matter how long it takes, May we keep trusting God, because as long as we trust God, there is hope. So as Jason leads us in song and we pray, pray trusting God, pray holding on to hope. Let us go into this time of prayer. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you um, join us next week. Have a great week. See you next week.